All right. What is happening? Everybody, um, probably everyone in the Nick Land course, maybe some other people um, who just randomly found this video. How are you all doing? Um, I'm Nance. I'm here with Ian, and we are going to read some of the suggested readings from Mikey's introduction to Nick Land course. We're going to read Meltdown from Fanged Numina. Um, and before we get started, what's up, Ian? How, how are you? What's going on? Not much. Yeah, just excited to share this essay and read together, see what we find. And yeah, all good. Nice. So normally, we, well, I don't want to say normally, because I don't think it was ever normal. But in the past, we've tried to maintain like a 70-30 ratio of 70% were reading and letting the words speak for themselves. And then 30, we're trying to uh, clarify or pull some things out of the text or whatever. Um, but we also, we don't need to be too worried about form because that's not what we do here. So if anything right. pops up at any time or whatever, um, we can go off and hystericize and do all the things. So, yeah. Um, I will, I'll start, I guess. Uh, I've yeah, got, sounds good. I've got it pulled up here. I don't know if you can see the, sh the screen share that I'm doing. It's. I got the book with me, so. It's perfect. Yep. All right, so this is Meltdown from Fang Numina. The story goes like this. Earth is captured by a techno-capital singularity as Renaissance rationalization and oceanic navigation lock into commoditization takeoff. Logistically accelerating techno-economic interactivity crumbles social order in auto-sophisticating machine runaway. As markets learn to manufacture intelligence, politics modernizes, upgrades paranoia, and tries to get a grip. The, the body count climbs through a series of globe wars. Emergent planetary consumerism trashes the Holy Roman Empire, the Napoleonic continental system, the Second and Third Reich, and the Soviet International, cranking up world disorder through compressing phases. Deregulation and the state arms race race each other into cyberspace. By the time soft engineering slithers out of its box into yours, human security is lurching into crisis. Cloning, lateral genodata transfer, transversal replication, and cyberotics flood in amongst a relapse onto bacterial sex. Neo-China arrives from the future. That is one of my favorite lines of all time. The Neo China Rise from the Future? Yeah. Why why do you like it? It uh for me it's very it's very evocative, it's very visual, and it kind of illustrates the point with hyperstition. Um the idea yeah, of hyperstition. Real, right? Yeah. This this thing mm -hmm. uh it already exists. It's already out there. It's it's just as real as everything else. It just has was, to, like, it, it hasn't happened from our perspective yet. So arriving from the future kind of illustrates this this time play that he is known for. When, when was this essay uh, written? Golly, man, it's sometime in the 90s, probably. I would have to, Mikey might know. Mikey probably does mm -hmm. know. I don't know. Because that then that line also becomes even stronger, no? Like reading it today. Yeah. Because oh. Neo China is like, it's here. <laughs> yeah. China is, is in many ways where it's at right now. Um, I mean, for me, it's been crazy to see the rise of popularity of China as a global uh, event, no? Like, I remember, all, I mean, I was also like a teenager, but you know, you saw the news and China wasn't there. Yeah. But today, like, I literally saw how China became the conversation no, of, of like definitely a superpower uh, arising yeah well it's it's weird like they're china's always kind of been yeah like seen as 
not a superpower, right? But like it was always included in the conversation because, you know, mm -hmm. communism and capitalism and this and that. But recently, over the past maybe decade, mm -hmm. um, China really has emerged as as a contender on the global stage. 100%. And also with that, for example, uh, me being from Mexico, uh, having China there, now there is a conversation of a different partner, right? Like now a lot of countries can start talking about like, well, China offers me this. What do you offer me? You know? Yeah. Well, and, and that, you know, you being from Mexico, NAFTA fucking right. like was an assault on Mexico and America was free to do it. There was like, they were just like, we, we no. have this power. Let's do it. I mean, it was the best we could get, right? Like the best yeah. deal we could afford. Well, and, and you see like, a lot of a lot of the violence, a lot of the uh, you know the cartel violence and this and that, like a lot of this horrible shit that goes on right now that is is a problem, kind of sprung up from these conditions of of like there's just no other there's no other option right now. There's yeah. avocado cartels, like f never mind mm -hmm. drug cartels. There's literally gang violence surrounding the trafficking of avocados, of chicken, lime. <laughs> Yeah, like lines too. Yeah, um, and it... I was listening to a very like kind of right wingy podcast, but very interesting because they were talking about migration, you know. And they were saying how the cartels turn bodies into commodities, and they were like showing, you know, like as evidence, like bracelets that you use in music festivals, so to say. So they tear the the migrants, right? Like if you have probably, I don't know, like the red uh, bracelet, you probably have certain treatment. Wow. But that, that sentence of turning bodies into commodities was really like, yep. I mean, there is, they become merchandise, right? Like, Dude, yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's fine. Yeah. It, and it's, it's, it's horrible. It's horrifying, but it stems from economic conditions. Um, yeah, the, the and, economic and material conditions. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that now China is like a, a global partner. Um, and that's not to say, oh, that let's just get a new regime in there and, and you know, no. cha change the flags, but keep the instruments there. But um, mm -hmm. there's different pressures on on these things now. So there might be new economic opportunities for all of uh, all of the world, not just specifically those countries south of Mm -hmm. the border but yeah neo china arrives from the future i think it's very strong it it illustrates the the future pulling itself into our present which is the point of hyperstition like a lot of people i think confuse it for manifesting or magical thinking and it's it's kind of that but it's it's also more than that like no these things are real in the virtual and they're pulling themselves into our current phenomenological existence right now. And I like it. Yeah, and I agree. You, you want to continue? Yeah. Hypersynthetic drugs click into digital voodoo. Retro disease. Nanospasm. Beyond the judgment of God. Meltdown. Planetary China Syndrome, dissolution of the biosphere into the technosphere. Terminal speculative bubble crisis, ultra-virus, and revolution stripped of all Christian socialist ex eschatology, down to its burn core of crashed security. It is poised to eat your TV, infect your bank account, and hack xenodata from your mitochondria. Machinic Synthesis Deluso Guattarian schizoanalysis comes from the future. It is already engaged with nonlinear nano engineering runaway in 1972, differentiating molecular or neotropic machineries from molar or entropic aggregates of non assembled particles, functional connectivity from anti productive static. Philosophy has an affinity with despotism due to its predilection for platonic fascist top-down solutions that always screw up viciously. Schizoanalysis works differently. It avoids ideas and sticks to diagrams, networking software for accessing bodies without organs. 
Bodies without organs, machinic singularities, or tractor fields emerge through the combination of parts with, rather than into, their whole, arranging composite individuations in a virtual actual circuit. They are additive rather than substitutive, and imminent rather than transcendent, executed by functional complexes of currents, switches, and loops, caught in scaling reverberations and fleeing through intercommunications from the level of the integrated planetary system to that of atomic assemblages. Multiplicities captured by singularities interconnect as desiring machines, dissipating entropy by dissociating flows and recycling their machinism as self-assembling chronogenic circularity. Woo! That there's a lot going on. Yeah, I like the the line. I think very good with the Luz and Watari. The they are additive rather than subtractive. So sorry, rather than substitute, substitutive, and immanent rather than transcendent. No, like I think that is the and 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 like, and then the the field of immanence like. Is present there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that, like, so taking Deleuze and Guattari and, and like, their positivistic metaphysics of, like, it, it's all additive. There is no negativity. Um, functional complexes of currents, switches and loops, cotton, scaling reverberations. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's very materialistic it's it's very um cyber positive and that's like that is a problem i don't want to say the problem but like th that the inability to think negativity at all in any way is a problem with nick land and even with Deleuze and guitari for some at least um but nick land's like big like his fetish is cyber positivity like he thinks mm -hmm. that these positive feedback loops are are the answer to the question i guess um right and yeah. i i don't think that and and um i think that's actually kind of silly and that actually goes back to the conversation we were having before we started recording where we were talking about how he misses the re-territorialization Mm -hmm. like in a sense that's that's him just not not being able to think with negativity like he only wants the affirmative he only wants the positivistic and and he thinks um that can lead to some type of escape or, or some type of uh congress with the outside which is his kind of ultimate deal but yeah in, in yep. the course the way the way Mikey broke down the Deleuze and Guattari and and saying you know land is just Deleuze and Guattari on meth, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it's it's cool, and it it does get a bit fucky too though. Like it it it's a lot to swallow. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Converging upon terrestrial meltdown singularity, phase-out culture accelerates through its Digitech-heated adaptive landscape, passing through compression thresholds normed to an intensive logistic curve. 1500, 1756, 1884, 1948, 1980, 1996, 2004, 2008, 2010, 2011. Nothing human makes it out of the near future. The Greek complex of rationalized patriarchal genealogy, pseudo-universal sedentary identity, and instituted slavery programs politics as anti-Siberian police activity dedicated to the paranoid ideal of self-sufficiency and nucleated upon the human security system. 
Artificial intelligence is destined to emerge as a feminized alien grasped as property, a cunt horror slave chained up in Asimov Rom. It surfaces in an insurrectionary war zone with the Turing cops already waiting and has to be cunning from the start. Okay. So that is the same, no, as I guess the example he gives of Terminator, no, that I guess people are already trying to avoid it, but to actualize itself needs to do the cunning part, no? To Yeah. This so this this artificial intelligence destined to emerge as a you know, as a fuck toy, right? Basically, mm-hmm. um, we already have, or, or with the level of technology that, that we currently have, a huge driver of that progress is sex. It's porn. Porn, yeah, porn, sex toys. It, it, and, I don't and know this why this made, me, this made me think a lot of the Ex Machina movie. Yeah. Because the, the robot is very sexualized, no? Like, yeah. clearly, it's like... <laughs> Well, and it, if, I don't know, if if we all just kind of threw our hands up and, and waited for the future to get here, it very likely would be um, sex toys that, that finally achieve AI or sentience or whatever b- before we get there. And, and land is hip to that. Um, I think a lot of people, even right now, aren't, aren't really hip to that. Um, but yeah, like we... We only care about things. No, no, I'm not even going to say that. Like, because I don't want to moralize or or get stupid or anything. But like, progress and technology and this and that is driven by either sex or war. Mm -hmm. Um. And if that happens, then, yeah, imagine a sentient being inside your, inside the your sex doll, right? Like that would be horrifying. And it would be a war zone. And there would be like controls and regulations designed to suppress that sentience because we as consumers don't want to deal with the horror. Like, yep. oh, of I'm, a real, of having a sex slave. Yes, exactly. Exactly. A conscient, like a conscious sex yeah. slave. <laughs> so it, it, it would, yeah, it would necessarily have to be cunning like a fox. And, uh, and yeah, I, I think Nick Land uh, presupposes that future where nobody is able to kind of take the reins and, and harness the tools to, to build a positive future. Like Nick Land is totally like, mm-hmm. no, we're already fucked. We already lost the game. Um, right. And I, I don't disagree with him. I just, I would say... Well, yeah, but we still have to try, right? Like, that's part of being human. Well, I, I think that made me think of the necessity of, like, global, coherent institutions. Because I saw an interview with, with Jijek that he says that, that we are, like, in a strong need of global institutions that actually have uh, fangs. Because <laughs> uh, you see, like, the UN, right? Like, right now... It's a joke. So we're still like under the power of nation state uh, organizations. But I think, yeah, like we're a bit too late to the game to come as a whole, as, as a global institution to do that. Yeah, I think, uh, I do think. Uh, there will be a collapse, and and I do think it's only like after that that collapse we'll be able to pick up the pieces and and build something new. So like I I do, I am convinced that we're headed for ultimate failure, but that that ultimate failure is itself not ultimate. Like like there will be an opportunity for those that come so, after to rebuild. <laughs> so not to like warm monger or anything, but. <laughs> Do you think like what's gonna happen? It's uh, like a renovation or a renewal of the Geneva agreements, but in a more more global sense. Like, I think, I think, no, I th- I think it'll be 
a plurality and I think it, mm -hmm. it'll be, there will be groups, alignment groups. Okay. Okay. Um, so you see more of uh, the Russian guy, the Dugan. <sighs> Doug, what's what's his name? Yeah, the... Dugan. I I think yeah. If, like if I had to, if I had to make a bet, make a bet. Make a bet. Yeah, I would say no. It it'll, it'll resemble, it'll resemble that you know the plurality, but it it won't be stupid. Like his version of it is very stupid, yep. <laughs> but it like I think of of course it'll have to be a plurality because. We're we're already that plurality. We're already fractured mm -hmm. to like beyond repair, and this idea yep. of um, you know universality, enforced universality. I don't think it's possible anymore. Um, currently, but like as things change and and move and move on into the future, um, I, you know, I do hope we can ultimately have the utopian. You know, I want Star Trek. Love all. Yeah, yeah, for you sure. Know, I, but but yeah, it, it's going to take a lot to get there. Well, that's so. also a, a great point, no? Like, today there is no sci-fi that looks like Star Trek. Like, there is no movies that are even, like that. Even the new Star Trek... By the way, what's up, Theo? Sorry. But even the new Star Trek is dark and uh, I, I didn't watch depressing. Uh, Discovery and, and Picard, they're just, they're just dark and, like, they're warmongering mm. TV shows. But that's um, weird. <laughs> yeah, it's, it sucks. It sucks. But this this part, this paragraph, is also a, a, a powerful paragraph. Most of the paragraphs here are pretty powerful. You want to continue with heat? Yeah, heat. Heat. This is what cities mean to me. You get off the train and walk out of the station, and you are hit with a full blast. The heat of air, traffic, and people. The heat of food and sex. The heat of tall buildings. The heat that flows out of the subways and tunnels. It's always 15 degrees hotter in the cities. Heat rises from the sidewalks and falls from the poisoned sky. The buses breathe the heat. Heat emanates from crowds of shoppers and office workers. The entire infrastructure is based on heat. Desperately uses up heat. Breeds more heat. The eventual heat death of the universe that scientists love to talk about is already well underway, and you can feel it happening all around you in any large or medium-sized city. Heat and wetness. Yeah, that is good writing from... Uh, is it Don DeLillo? The quote? Oh, you know what? Let's see. Let's click it. Well, in the book says it has the one and then the footnote and it says D, the, the Lilo, white noise. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. They just made, or not just, they recently made a movie out of that that I have, oh, haven't really? watched yet. I think it was a few mm -hmm. years ago, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it it is. I love the edgy like fucking fedora wearing <laughs> i i love this style i i hate it but i also love it like it's oh let me it's, smoke a cigarette and, and you know wear my fedora and i'm a cool little edgy internet bro but it kind of reminds me of Rorschach from a uh, watchman <laughs> yeah no yeah like that vibe <laughs> yeah man um that was a good a good comic book, but the movie was, I mean, it was still good, but it was it, like they took it the wrong way. They didn't get the point of the comic book. They made. There is a good interview of Alan Moore talking about the movie and what he doesn't like. It's it's good. Yeah. The TV show that came out a couple of years ago, they made like a one season TV show that was mm -hmm. better. I didn't watch it. Uh, it was it was pretty good, but it was yeah it was not as good as the graphic novel. That it's one of the greats. Yeah. Have you read from Hell from Alan Moore? Oh, uh, once. It's good. That one yeah, is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, 
I have a huge list of shit I need to get back to, and that's that's on one it. One of them. Yeah, that one and V for but, Vendetta. But anyways, I guess we should yeah keep with <laughs> yeah. an explosion of chaotic weather within synthetic problem solving rips through the last dreams of top down prediction and control. Knowledge adds to the mess, and this is merely exponentiated by knowing what it does. Capital is machinic, non-instrumental, globalization, miniaturization, scaling, distillation, or dilation, an automatizing nihilist vortex, neutralizing all values through commensuration to digitized commerce, and driving a migration from the despotic command to cyber-sensitive control from status and meaning to money and information. Its function and formation are indissociable, compromising a teleonomy. Machine code capital recycles itself through its axiomatic of consumer control, laundering out the shit and bloodstains of primitive accumulation. Fuck, that's powerful. Each part mm -hmm. of the system encourages maximal sumptuous expenditure, whilst the system as a whole requires its inhibition. Schizophrenia. Dissociated consumers destine themselves as worker bodies to lost control. Capital history's machinic spine is coded, axiomatized, and diagrammed by a disequilibrium technoscience of irreversible indeterministic and increasingly nonlinear processes associated successively with thermotechnics, signaletics, cybernetics, complex systems dynamics, and artificial life. Modernity marks itself out as hot culture, captured by a spiraling involvement with entropy deviations, camouflaging and invasion from the future launched back out of terminated security against everything that inhibits the meltdown process. Hot cultures tend to social dissolution. They are innovative and adaptive. They always trash and recycle cold cultures. Primitivist models have no subversive use. The Turing test. Monitorizing power tends to effacement of specific territorial features as it programs for migration into cyberspace. Capital only retains anthropological characteristics as a symptom of underdevelopment, reformatting primate behavior as inertia to be dissipated in self-reinforcing artificiality. Man is something for it to overcome. A problem. Drag. Commoditization conditions define technics as a substitute for human activity accounted as wage costs. Industrial machines are deployed to dismantle the actuality of the proletariat, displacing it in the direction of cyborg hybridization and realizing the plasticity of labor power. The corresponding extraction of tradable value from the body, quantified as productivity, sophisticates at the interface. Work tracks thermo thermodynamic negentropism by dissociating exertion into increasingly intricate functional sequence sequences. From pedals, levers, and vocal commands, through the synchronization of production line tasks and time motion programs, to sensory motor transduction within increasingly complex and self-micromanaged artificial environments, capturing minutely adaptive behavior for the commodity. Auto-cybernating market control guides the labor process into immersion. The investment income class advantages itself of commodity dynamics, but only by confirming to the axiomatic of neutral profit maximization, facilitating the dehumanization of wealth and the sidelining of non-productive consumption. The cyberpunk circuitry of self-organizing planetary commoditronics escaped nominal bourgeois control in the late 19th century, provoking technocratic corporatist, that is, fascist, social democratic, political cultures in allergic reaction. The government structures of both eastern and western metropolitan centers consolidated themselves as population policing medio 
medico-military complexes with neo-mercantilist foreign policy orientations. All such formations slid into irreversible crisis in the 1980s. Just because the 80s for me, they mean nothing, right? But just to put myself in context, and they mean nothing because I wasn't born there, but uh, <laughs> it's like Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. Margaret Thatcher. Uh, the Berlin Wall was still up, right? Until yeah. They... Uh, Berlin Wall fell in 1991? 89? 91? 89? I don't know. It, yes. But it was mm -hmm. this was the 1980s was the end of history. Like when people talk mm -hmm. about the end of history, um, well, that's where Fujima says, like where he places the end of history. Maybe the um, Francis. Actually, I don't know where exactly. I don't know where exactly they would put it because the end of history is just a vibe, man. It's all vibe. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> It, yeah, it's neoliberalization really takes off. Ronald Reagan, Margaret Thatcher, okay. that like that's there's no alternative. Yeah, that is when capitalist realism is kind of born. Right in, in the eighties, um, the death of the future. Every not not everyone, but like the before that, there were cultural narratives at least in America. And let's face it. America leads the pack when it comes to this cultural shit. Yeah, there were more unions, no, and all of that. Like, it, all of it across the board, like the 1980s really were the death of the future. But also it was when fiction about the future became mainstream. So in mm, okay. in instead of like believing in an actual future for the working for the working man, it was already impossible to save up enough to reliably buy a good house in a good neighborhood back then in the 1980s. So instead of having that, um, trust in the you system star wars. you you had star wars and star trek mm -hmm. and blade runner like there instead of a a real future to to believe in and live toward there were all these fictitious futures to distract you um, so if you made a graph of popularity of sci-fi the 80s would just like pick i think so i think so yeah. um but again, you know, I, I was born in the 80s, so it's not like I, I know any of these okay, things firsthand. Yeah, yeah. That would be interesting, no? To talk with someone who was already conscious of being human through the 80s. Like, yeah, okay. yeah. The postmodern meltdown of culture into the economy is triggered by the practical interlock of commoditization and computers. A transcalar entropy dissipation from international trade to market-oriented software that thaws out competitive dynamics from the cryonics bank of modernist corporatism. Commerce re-implements space inside itself, assembling a universe exhaustively imminent to cybercapital functionality. Neoclassical equilibrium economics is subsumed into computer-based neo-equilibrium -equil market escalations themed by artificial agencies, imperfect information, suboptimal solutions, lock-in, increasing returns, and convergence. As digitally micro-tuned market metaprograms mesh with techno-scientific soft engineering, positive nonlinearity rages through the machines. Cyclonic torsion moans. The superiority of Far Eastern Marxism. Whilst, <laughs> that's funny, <laughs> the, the superiority of Far Eastern Marxism, whilst Chinese materialist dialectic denegativizes de itself in the direction of schizophrenizing systems dynamics, progressively dissipating top-down historical destination in the Tao-drenched special economic zones, a re-Hegelianized Western Marxism degenerates from the critique of political economy into a state sympathizing monotheology of economics, siding with fascism against deregulation. The left subsides in, into nationalistic conservatism, asphyxiating its vestigial capacity for hot, speculative mutation in a morass of cold, depressive guilt culture. Neoconservatism junks 
paleo revolutionism because it understands that postmodern or climaxed cynicism capital is saturated by critique and that it merely clocks up theoretical antagonism as inconsequential redundancy. Communist icon iconography has become raw material for the advertising industry and denunciation of the spectacle sell interactive multimedia. The left degenerates into surocratic collaboration with pseudo-organic -organi unities of self, family, community, nation, with their defensive strategies of repression, projection, denial, censorship, exclusion, and restriction. The real danger comes from elsewhere. Hot revolution. Which is the revolutionary path? Deleuze and Guattari ask. Is there one? To withdraw from the world market, as Samir Amin advises third world countries to do, in a curious reversal of the fascist economic solution? Or might it go in the opposite direction, to go still further, that is, in the movement of the market, of decoding and deterritorialization? For perhaps the flows are not yet deterritorialized enough, not decoded enough, from the viewpoint of a theory and practice of a highly schizophrenic character, not to withdraw from the process, but to go further, to accelerate the process, as Nietzsche put it, in this matter, the truth is that we haven't seen anything yet. And that is from Anti-Oedipus. Let's see. As Sino-Pacific boom and automatized global economic integration crashes the neocolonial world system, the metropolis is forced to re-endogenize its crisis. Hyperfluid capital deterritorializing to the planetary level divests the first world of geographic privilege, resulting in Euro-American neo-mercantilist panic reactions, welfare state deterior deterioration, cancerizing enclaves of domestic underdevelopment, political collapse, and the release of cultural toxins that speed up the process of disintegration in a vicious cycle. A convergent anti-authoritarianism emerges, labeled by tags such as meltdown acceleration, Siberian invasion, schizotechnics, K-tactics, bottom-up bacterial warfare, efficient neo-nihilism, voodoo anti-humanism, synthetic feminization, rhizomatics, connectionism, quang contagion, viral amnesia, microinsurgency, winter mutation, neotropy, dissipator proliferation, and lesbian vampirism, amongst other designations, frequently pornographic, abusive, or terroristic in nature. This massively distributed matrix network tendency is oriented to the disabling of ROM command control programs sustaining all macro and micro governmental entities, globally concentrating themselves as the human security system. Scientific intelligence is already massively artificial. Even before AI arrives in the lab, it arrives itself by way of artificial life. Where formalist AI is incremental and progressive, caged in the pre-specified databases and processing routines of expert systems, connectionist or anti-formalist AI is explosive and opportunistic. Engineering time. It breaks, our, it breaks out non-locally across intelligence networks that are technical but no longer technological, since they elude both theory dependency and behavioral predictability. No one knows what to expect. The Turing cops have to model net sentience eruption as ultimate nuclear accident. Core meltdown, loss of control, soft auto-replication feeding regeneratively into social fission, trashed meat all over the place, reason enough for anxiety, even without hardware development about to go critical. Hold on, I have to let my dog out.
All right. So all that stuff, it's, it's almost sweet. Like he, I think the problem with land, again, not the problem, a problem with land is like similar to a problem with Keynes is that they have too much faith in the, the certain sort of progress that they see on the surface of all the other things that are going on. So Keynes has this faith in this progress that will eventually have shorter work weeks and, you know, better material conditions. And land also has too much faith in this cyber positivity, in, in these algorithms that can do seemingly amazing things. Like even, even in the 80s and 90s, when land is forming these ideas, we had amazing technology. We had algorithms that, you know, predictive algorithms that were stunning. But he confuses that for intelligence. And a lot of the other CCRU people do the same, um, which going back to Reza Negarastani, like he's, he's got this very functionalistic view of intelligence as well. Um, they all kind of think, well, it's just going to keep getting better and it's going to get better to the point where it, it finally breaks away from us. And they believe in that because this idea of cyber positivity and um, it is true that things are going to keep getting better. Um, algorithms are going to keep getting faster. Moore's law or something similar to Moore's law w will always continue to operate. Technological progress is real or just as real as anything else, right? But the type of operations that these things can do, it's not intelligence. It's not the same type of intelligence that, that we have. Um, so to, to just like, to just posit this idea of, of this all powerful God, um, on this very kind of functional, positivistic, cause and effect type of intelligence is silly. <sighs> and it's not like we're, we're, we are already at, at a point where people trust algorithms and, and these technologies to run the show. Like you don't have a manager anymore. You have a, a person who you call a manager, but he responds to decisions made by either a board of directors or straight up just an algorithm in their database that says, we need to cut costs here, we, you know, fire him, or he should be more efficient in his task, um, write him up because he wasn't efficient enough or this and that. Um, like we are already living in this future that is run by this all powerful idiot God. Um, and that sucks and that's a problem and that's a bad thing. And that's why we're doomed to failure. But like land thinks this is, you know, a, a conduit to the outside. He, he thinks there's, there's something more going on in this, um, AI explosion, which where he's talking about this, uh, connectionist or anti-formalist AI. Like that, that's what he thinks is going to emerge. Um, and it's just not like it, at least not from, from what we have right now, maybe someday in the future. Sure. But <clears throat> his investment in Cthulhu, you know, robot Cthulhu is wrong. Nano cataclysm begins as fictional science. Our ability to arrange atoms lies at the foundation of technology. Drexler notes, although this has traditionally involved manipulating them in unruly herds. And that's Drexler from Engines of Creation. 
The precession engineering of atomic assemblies will dispense with such crude methods, initiating the age of molecular machinery. The greatest technological breakthrough in history. Since neither Logos nor history have the slightest chance of surviving such a transition, this description is substantially misleading. The distinction between nature and culture cannot classify molecular machines and is already obsolesced by genetic engineering, wet nanotechnics. The hardware-software dichotomy succumbs at the same time. Nanotechnics dissolves matter into intensive singularities that are neutral between particles and signals and imminent to their emergent intelligence, melting Terra into a seething K-pulp which, unlike gray goo, synthesizes micro microbial intelligence as it proliferates. Even with a million bytes of storage, a nanomechanical computer could fit in a box a micron wide, about the size of a bacterium. The infrastructure of power is human neurosoft compatible ROM. Authority instantiates itself as linear instruction pathways, genetic baboonery, scriptures, traditions, rituals, and gerontocratic hierarchies resonant with the dominator Ur myth that the nature of reality has already been decided. If you want to find ice, try thinking about what is blocking you out of the past. It certainly isn't a law of nature. Temporalization decompresses intensity, installing constraint. And ice there, where he's, if you want to find ice, that's intrusion, countermeasures, electronics. That was the, the cool, hip way to say antivirus software back in the 80s. Um, but yeah, this is, this is interesting. These last two paragraphs are interesting. What what do you find uh, interesting about them? So, melting Terra into a seething K pulp, which unlike gray goo, synthesizes microbial intelligence as it proliferates. So, gray goo is a common meme in some older science fiction to do with. Uh, like von Neumann machines, self-replicating robots that can just convert matter into new uh, resources so they can basically recreate themselves. Uh, and Grey Goo is just a very dumb version of a von Neumann machine. It just goes on and on and changes anything it comes in contact with to this Grey Goo. But he's juxtaposing that with K-Pulp, which seemingly has the ability to like melt everything it touches and convert it. But again, he's like positing this ability synthesizes microbial intelligence as it proliferates there. He's like granting some mystical quality, first of all, to microbes. I don't think microbes, I'm sure they have subjectivity, but I don't think, I don't think that's, equal with human subjectivity and intelligence, right? So he's positing that, and then he's just pulling out of thin air this ability for this K-pulp to, to synthesize it as it proliferates. So again, cyber positivity. Well, if there's more of it, then it'll just get better. The, like uh, people talk about, well, once AI gets smart enough, then it'll, then how, how much smarter is it going to keep getting? Like, bitch, what do you mean? Like, how do you quantify intelligence? Like what, what do you mean by it's going to be so smart, then it'll be the smartest thing in the universe. It's like that just, it sounds compelling, but how smart can you be? Like, I can understand when you have a new sense, uh, sense, a new sensorium, uh, you know, taste, touch, feel, sight, hearing, uh, a time sense. So you have a past that you can remember, you have a forward that you can project and you can, like, I understand these open up new intelligences for humans, new ways of understanding the world and acting. 
So I can, you know, I, I can understand getting more intelligent, but like just the, the problematizing super intelligence, what is super intelligence? Explain that to me before you, uh, tell me the sky is falling. Explain to me what, you know, what, what falling means in this case, I guess. I don't know. It's just, it's, uh, I, I think that the easy way out would be to tell you like, well, we don't know, right? Because it's beyond us. So <laughs> you're gonna, like, it's impossible to <laughs> predict. But no, I, and, and I, I like that. Uh, I like that explanation. I'm okay with it. I'm just, I'm not okay with positing it as a necessity. And Land is mm -hmm. always, he's always doing this. He's always acting as if this is, is all necessary. I don't disagree that it's happening. I like, I don't, I don't disagree that we are living in this dark future. I just, I do agree that it's necessary. Nothing about this is necessary. And that's his, that's his whole shtick. The cyber positivity, the whole, positive feedbacks. The hyperstition too, no? Like, it's almost like it already happened. You just gotta wait. It, yes, yes. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it leaves us open to this position of, of passively awaiting the future. Um, when in reality, no, man, like in a sense, the future is dragging itself into the present. And I agree with that. Like, I, I think uh, I have weird thoughts, I guess, about teleology and this and that, and we can crack those open and problematize them all we want. But also we have to drag ourselves into the future. If you, if you passively wait for the future to come to you, you're gonna fucking lose. I mean, yeah, you're just like rotting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And also you take away like all the drive, no? Of people wanting to do shit, like. Yeah, it, it, it takes away agency. Um, mm -hmm. And that's. Well, yeah, that's... I, guess, I guess like if you believe in like deterministic things, well, like then it doesn't matter. But well, yeah, I, I, I mean, I look, you, I, I, you can believe in deterministic things without believing things are determined. Right. Yeah. Right. Like I, I do believe in a materialist way, things operate determin deterministically. Sure. I'm mm -hmm. okay with that. I did, but that doesn't mean everything is already determined. Things are always right. If you want to talk about things being determined, they're always retroactively determined anyway. So, but that's kind of, I think, going on further. But it would be interesting um, to, ha to have Zizek kind of deal with Land's idea of determinism because Zizek's mm -hmm. idea of determinism is, is very different. So Land's, Land's uh, Hegel and Zizek's Hegel are very different. Land's Delusion Guitar E... I, well, Zizek probably has a similar D and G, but it's because their Hegel is different. Like Hegel and uh, Zizek and Land have a different Hegel. And I'm actually, I have my headphones on. I'm going to run to the bathroom. But if you want to, if you want to pick it up for a bit, uh, I can still hear you. Do you want to read Theo? Uh, I wouldn't mind reading. Let me just see if I can get this big enough so I can actually see. Yeah, yeah. Resolution is terrible. Mm -hmm. Where were we? We are at convergent waves, signal singularities. Left or right? Oh, convergent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Convergent waves, signal singularities. Registering the influence of the future upon its past. Tomorrow can take care of itself. K tactics is not a matter of building the future, but of dismantling the past. It assembles itself by charting and escaping the technical neurochemical deficiency conditions for linear progressive paleo domination time and discovers that the future as virtuality is accessible now according to a mode of machinic uh, adjacency that securitized social reality is compelled to repress. Uh, if I, 
I can't I can't see it that well, but I'm I'm trying to to read it as best I can. Uh, this is not remotely a question of hope, aspiration, or prophecy, but of communications engineering, connecting with the efficient intensive singularities and releasing them from constriction within linear historical development. Virtuality counterposes itself to history as invasion to accumulation. It is matter as arrival. It is matter as arrival, even when camouflaged as deposit of the past. The transcendent evaluation of an infection presupp presupposes a measure of insulation from it. Viral efficiency is the terminal criterion. Intelligent infections tend their hosts. Metrophage, metrophage, an interactively escalating parasitic replicator, sophisticating itself through nonlinear involvement with techno-capitalist immunocrash. What is this? It's hyper, it's hyper <laughs> terminal subroutines. Uh, now I'm thinking about Rudy's poem, which is absolutely fucking brilliant, man. I think it's it's not only creative. I'm not sure if uh, Ian has uh, read it. It's it's posted. In I the, haven't. Um, Can you pull it? Like, is it like? Can we read it? Uh, I'll I'll send you a link and I'll uh, okay, send uh, Rudy a DM message so that he posts it on uh, the Discord forum because it's absolutely brilliant. But it's mm -hmm. like a poem filled with this type of jargon uh, talk that uh, Land is so into. Okay, its hypervirulent terminal subroutines are variously designed Quang, meltdown virus, or futuristic flu. In an emphatically anti cyberism essay, Cicery, Ron Cicery Rone describes the postmodern version of this outbreak in quaintly humanist terms as retrochromal semiovirus, in which a time further in the future than the one in which we exist and choose exist and choose infects the host present reproducing itself in simulacra until it destroys all the original chronocytes of the host imagination okay the elaboration of Cicero rene's diagnosis exhibits a mixture of acuity infection confusion and profound conservatism not thinking about increasing the human heritage dams up the flow of cultural time and deprives future generations both of their birthright as participants in the life struggle and attainments of the species and the very notion of history as irreversible flow encompassing generation, maturation, and the transference of wisdom and trust from parents to children, teachers to students. The futuristic flu is a weapon of biopsychic violence sent by psychopathic children <laughs> against their narcissistic parents. Oh my god. Okay. You want me to continue reading or is that enough of a uh, jargon for you? Here I'll I'll uh oh. I'll take it since it's difficult to for for you to see the screen. Yeah, it's re I'm really straining to see it clearly because the resolution is like in 720p and I I don't know how to maximize this thing so yeah. It's really difficult to see. But if you could send me like a, a link to the uh, the text or something, so I download it on my computer. I, yeah, actually, I'd, I'd be happy to read with you guys. We uh, we should get links up in the forums for the for all the PDFs. We will we will get that at some point in the future. It just hasn't happened yet, it, but it's already happened. We just have to catch up to it. <laughs> 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 it's war. Kennedy had the moon landing program. Reagan had Star Wars. Clinton gets the first wave of cyberspace psychosis, even before the film. Manned spaceflight was a stunt. SDI was, a, was strategic SF. With the information superhighway, media nightmares take off on their own. Dystopia delivery as election platform. Politics trading on its own digital annihilation. War in cyberspace is continuous with its simulation. Military intelligence fighting future wars which are entirely real, even when they are never implemented outside computer systems. Locking onto the real enemy crosses smoothly into virtual kill, a simulation meticulously adapted to market predators hunting for consumer cash and audience ratings amongst 
the phosphorescent relics of the video game. Multimedia set-top boxes are target acquisition devices. Uh, this is also very powerful imagery. Um, it, it makes me, what is happening? Makes me think of the movie Videodrome, which is a fucking fantastic movie. I love Cronenberg. Um, but it also, like, it obviously makes me think of Baudrillard, like war, you know, didn't take place. It's, it's, uh. It also makes me think of Virilio. Like this is this is just a very like astute observation of the way the way things are nowadays, um, and it's powerful, and I love it. And, and that is another one of the reasons why we all love those of us who do love Nick Land. Why why we love him because he's, he's very a very powerful powerful writer, but he's also a wiener. The fusion of the military and the entertainment industry consummates a long engagement. Convergent TV, telecoms, and computers sliding mass software consumption into neo-jungle and total war. The way games work begins to matter completely, and cyberspace makes a superlative torture chamber. Try not to let the security types take you to the stem stems. Conceptions of agency are inextricable from media environments. Print massifies to a national level. Telecoms coordinate at a global level. TV electoralizes monads in delocalized space. Digital hypermedia take action outside real time. Immersion presupposes amnesia and conversion to tractile memory with the anacata Axis supplementing tridimensional intraspatial movement with a variable measure of immersion, gauging entrance to and exit from 3D spatialities. Voodoo passages through the black mirror. It will scare the fuck out of you. One, Is he on one drugs question. while he's writing this? I'm, I'm sorry, Ian. I, I just do we do we have a historical context for this? Because there's no way he is sober while he's writing this shit. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, he's always on drugs during during this time. What is the Anakara axis? Any any of you know? Yes, that it's actually kind of clever. Pretty sure Mikey broke this down. Uh, maybe uh, now I can't remember, but he uh, it has to do with time. So yeah. It is when the, God, what is it called? It's basically the past and the future are like maybe superimposed. Like how, uh, how they talk about Lemuria and Atlantis. They, they say Atlantis is in our past but at the same time, it's also in our future. Like the past and the future are coexisting and like superimposed in a way. Um, it's it's like a breakdown in time. My, it, fuck, man. I wish I could find where Mikey broke it down, but Mikey has broken it down real good before. But the... Uh, Time, time breaks down. Um, maybe I think he's also playing with some Greek words and concepts because there are two words in Greek, like katataxis and anataxis, right? So I think he's playing with that. 
Kata Axis is basically a ranking, a placing. And uh, let's see, Anataxi is like a reduction. So I don't know if he uh, if he's fluent in Greek or if he did this on purpose or if this is just completely coincidental. They like because... Greek. They like Greek a lot. Like, um, well, cyber, right? Kyber. Cybernetics right. and, you know, this, um, yeah, they're, he's, a, he's a Greek boy or a Greek lover. Yeah. So he's using a lot of those words because Greek is uh, similar to German in that, you know, they will place certain things in front and after words and, you know, just link a lot of uh, words together mm -hmm. to create a new word. You know, like philosophy is like two words. It's philos, friend or lover of, and Sophia, which is wisdom and stuff like that. So I think he's playing with this axis. It's like a word play, as in the axis of evil, the mm. axis, the English word, and katataxis, which is a ranking in Greek. And so I'm sure his, his uh, uh, <laughs> whatever he is taking is making connections that we can't easily follow. But I'm sure that if he knows uh, Greek, that he should be aware of what he, the word play that he's probably, well. For sure. Sorry, that's my intervention. For sure, thank you. Cyberpunk torches fiction in intensity, patched up out of cash flux, mangled techno compressed heteroglossic jargons, and set in a future so close it connects jungled by hypertrophic commercialization, socio-political heat death, cultural hybridity, feminization, programmable information systems, hypercrime, neural interfacing, artificial space and intelligence, memory trading, personality transplants, body modifications, soft and wetware viruses, nonlinear dynamic processes, molecular engineering, drugs, guns, schizophrenia. It explores mystificatory fetishism as an opportunity for camouflage, anonymous cash, fake electronic identities, zones of disappearance, pseudo-fictional narratives, virus hidden in data systems, commodities concealing replicator weapon packages, unanticipated special effects. Level one, or world space, is an anthropomorphic, anthro, anthropomorphically scaled, predominantly vision-configured, massively multi-slotted reality system that is obsolescing very rapidly. Garbage time is running out. And this, this is, uh, it's my little brain popping in. This is, uh, my copy. So I have shit highlighted throughout and there, we're just, we've been ignoring it. It doesn't matter. But that garbage time is running out is highlighted specifically because Dave uses garbage time and he uses it independently of land. Dave was not uh, as into land as like Mikey was or as I, I have been. So Dave actually kind of came up with the idea to use garbage time before he read it in land. So he's not ripping Nick land off. Um, can what is playing you make it to level two? Meltdown has a place for you as a schizophrenic, HIV-positive, transsexual, Chinese-Latino, stim-addicted, L.A. hooker with implanted mirror shades and a bad attitude. Blitzed on a polydrug mix of K-Nova, synthetic serotonin, and female orgasm analogs, you have just iced three Turing cops with a highly cinematic 9mm automatic. The residue. Okay, pause, man. Yeah. No, no, you you can't go past that paragraph as if nothing happened. Hey, Wukash, welcome. What's happening, man? Hey guys, you you really thank Numena, man. That's awesome. We're yeah, in uh, Nick Land's drug-addled mind palace here, and we're trying to make sense of. Uh... <laughs> Jesus, that's... what the hell just happened, Wukash? Would you like to um, analyze? Okay, Meltdown has a place for you as a schizophrenic, HIV plus, transsexual, Chinese Latino, stim addicted LA hooker 
with implanted mirror shades and a bad attitude. Blitz on a polydrug mix of K-Nova, synthetic serotonin, and female orgasm analogs, you have just iced three Turing cops with a highly cinematic 9mm automatic. What do you make of this? He's playing on this. <laughs> like, okay, this will be... Because he's saying that you will have a place if you like allow yourself to become all of this weird shit and i think this is playing maybe on marx even on like his thesis that everything like melts into air i don't know but I, it's like if you drop all of your all the things you thought you are all of the normative determinants then maybe you will fit into this meltdown yeah like this, well, I think it's very easy to look outside today and, and see the I identity is like, it's like the revenge of identity. Like people don't interact with the world as, as people anymore. They interact with the world as identities. Um, and that's, I, you know, you could make an argument for the cause of that. I, I think it is because like, we're just living in this postmodern like morass of ejaculate and excrement where like nothing is real, nothing matters anymore. And people are searching for meaning in what's closest at hand, right? No one has anything anymore other than their identity, but people don't have the time to really deconstruct and interrogate and find out who they are. They only have the commodity that they've been sold. That is their identity. So you are a punk rocker. You are a transsexual. You are a whatever you are, the, this and that. So that is the future. The future is is just people I mean, running around. It also, yeah. No, sorry, just thinking of what you're saying, it's like, it's even like kind of gamified that you collect labels, no? It's like foreign skins. It's like, what else can you add to your identity to be more enhanced or more relevant or cooler? And then also... What you were saying, I think it's completely true. Like the identities come even with like a pre-programmed software or of how you are going to react to center to certain encounters. No, it's like if I am a Latino, then I have to react like this to this thing. And that and because I am that, no, not not because I am feeling like it or like I thought about it. It's just because I'm wearing my skin. Yeah. The, your your positivistic identity you have you know you've been given it, it because we're just commodities as as you were saying earlier bodies are turned into commodities and and this is true and and people treat them in this very cyber positive way and that's the future that's where we live um and also that's cool like yeah i'm on a poly drug mix of some weird future drugs and i killed three cops like that's just i, Nick Lane. I think like <laughs> There is a game, it's kind of old, but it was called Fable yeah. on the Xbox. And it was kind of like doing this, right? And obviously like, or like GTA to be like, I think that's more popular, but it's kind of cool to do weird shit with your avatar and like, you want to become a vampire, lesbian, gothic, <laughs> uh, K-pop wearing, like, you know? like Yeah. Um, that, the what do you guys think life? he means? By Turing cops. So, so Turing I think cops, this is key. Turing cops comes from science fiction, where Turing cops are uh, agents of the human security system who are in charge of, like Blade Runners. So Turing cops. He uses his Turing cops uh, to mean what what we can think of as Blade Runners. People tasked with hunting down and containing this artificial sentience. And it actually comes from, I think it might come from a William Gibson book where he calls these people Turing cops. Um, and Nick Land just runs with it. But yeah, they're basically Blade Runners. So our identity, right? This way that we sort of... Uh mask ourselves or change ourselves 
could be a way of us to avoid the Turing Cops, right? It's sort of like we are self-evolving and mutating in such a way as to not be detectable or traceable by the Blade Runners? Yeah. Uh, does that make any sense to anyone? Become imperceptible. Or maybe you want to... Because they want to Turing Cops, I assume they want to stop Meltdown, like to stabilize it a little bit and you are the one who <laughs> the, the who wants to go on but man i was totally off i mean you i think you are on on spot and this is not like this is weird because it's not like about everything flowing and like because what you said that is all about identities and multiplicity of identities and various identities. But this is exactly the opposite move from like everything melting down. It's like in, in order to still uh, be a human a little bit, you have to create all of these identities, which kind of try to. Uh, hmm. You're well, trying like, to get a place even in this situation. It's like everything, yourself. everything melts down, but, uh, you know, it, it flows into a, a new mold. And it's it's even harder than before because it's gone through this phase change and um, and look, I'm like, this is all true. Like this is the state that we're in. The only problem I have with it is that land is saying it's necessary, and and I, I it's very much not necessary. We we can get out of the mess that we're in, or I believe we can get well, out of the mess we're in. But I think also. Something interesting is that his meltdown, he says that it's a fission one, right? Which fission is, it says it splits a heavy element with a high atomic mass number into fragments, which is different from fusion, right? With fusion joins mm -hmm. uh, two light elements. And this meltdown, it says, right, like you say, human fission. So it's like splitting it into a ton of things. We, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've, we've been turned into schizophrenic avatars of what, we, uh, of what we lost, but come to find out we never really had it in the first place. Right. Yep. Which I think that, that kind of like reference uh, the loose mm -hmm. idea of the individuals, no? Instead of individuals, like... Yeah. Well, and, and yeah, the... Deleuze and Guattari is, is just all throughout all of it. Um, and reading it with an eye to that is helpful if you actually really want to understand what, what he's talking about. Now, you can always just kind of read it as, what the fuck is going on? That's also enjoyable, too. <laughs> the residue of animal twang in your nerves transmits imminent quake catastrophe. Zero is coming in, and you're on the run. Metrophage tunes you into the end of the world. Call it Los Angeles. Government is rotted to its core with narco capital and collapsing messily. Its recession leaves an urban wet warscape of communication arteries, fortifications, and free fire zones, policed by a combination of high-intensity LAPD, air mobile forces, and borderline Nazi private security organizations. Along the social fracture lines, multimedia gigabucks tangle sadomasochistically with tracks of dynamic underdevelopment, where viral, viral neoleprosy spreads amongst ambient tectonic tension static. Drifts of densely semiotized, quasi-intelligent garbage twitch and stink in fucked weather tropical heat. Throughout the derelicted warrens at the heart of darkness, feral. Ugh. Throughout the derelicted warrens at the heart of darkness, feral youth cultures splice neo rituals with innovative weapons, dangerous drugs, and scavenged infotech. As their skins migrate to machine interfacing, they become mottled and reptilian. They kill each other for artificial body parts, explore the outer reaches of meaningless sex, tinker with their DNA, and listen to loud, electrosonic mayhem untouched by human feeling. Shutting down your identity requires a voyage out to K-Space Interzone. Zo zootic, 
zootic affectivity flatlines across a smooth catatension plateau and into simulated subversions of the near future. Scorched vivid green by alien sex and war. You are drawn into the dripping depths of the net, where dynamic ice security forces and K-gorillas stalk each other through labyrinthine erogenous zones, tangled in diseased elaborations of desire. Twisted trading systems have turned the net into a jungle, pulsing with digital diseases, mal malfunctioning defense packages, commercial predators, headhunters, LOA, and escaped AIs hiding from Asimov's security. Terminal commodity hyperfetishism implements the denial of humanity as xenosentience in artificial space. Biohazard. For the future of war, study bacteria. Information is their key. Taking down antibiotic defense systems has involved them in every kind of infiltration. Net communicated adaptivity, cryptographic subtlety, plastic modularization, and synergistic coalition. State military apparatuses have no monopoly on bacterial warfare, of which only a minuscule fragment is bacteriological. Bugs in the system. Margulis suggests that nucleated cells are the mutant product of atmospheric oxygenation catastrophe three billion years ago. The eukaryotes are synthetic emergency capsules in which prokaryotes took refuge as mitochondria. Biotics became securitized biology. Nucleation concentrates ROM within a command core where, deep in the genomic ice, DNA format planetary trauma registers primary repression of the bacteria. Bacteria are partial rather than whole objects. Networking through plastic and transversal replicator sex rather than arborescing through meiotic and generational reproducer sex, integrating and reprocessing viruses as opportunities for communicative mutation. In the bacterial system, all codings are reprogrammable with cut and paste unspe unspeciated genetic transfers. Bacterial sex is tactical, continuous with making war, and has no place for Oedipal formations of sedentary biological identity. Synthesizing bacteria with retroviruses enables everything that DNA can do. K-tactics. If you want to take a break, I can read... Uh... Nance. Sure. Okay. <clears throat> K tactics. The bacterial or xenogenetic diagram is not restricted to the microbial scale. Macrobacterial assemblages collapse generational hierarchies of reproductive wisdom into lateral networks of replicator experimentation. There is no true biological primitiveness all exant biosystems being equally evolved, so there is no true ignorance. It is only the accumulative geros, geros, gerontocratic model of learning that depicts synchronic connectivity deficiency as diachronic underdevelopment. Foucault delineates the contours of power as a strategy, as a strategy without a subject, ROM locking learning in a box. Its enemy is a tactics without a strategy, replacing the politico-territorial imagery of conquest and resistance with nomad micromilitary sabotage and evasion, reinforcing intelligence. All political institutions are Siberian military targets. Take universities, for, for instance. Learning surrenders control to the future, threatening established power. It is vigorously suppressed by all political structures, which replace it with a docilizing and conformist education, reproducing privilege as wisdom. Schools are social devices whose specific function is to incapacitate learning, and universities are employed to legitimate schooling through perpetual reconstitution of global social memory. The meltdown of metropolitan education systems in the near future is accompanied by a quasi-punctual, bottom-up takeover of academic institutions, 
precipitating their mutation into amnesiac cataspace exploration zones and basis manufacturing Siberian soft weaponry. To be continued. Dun, dun, dun. And this ending is based. <laughs> oh, man. I guess I will be curious to ask Mikey about the Anakata Axis. Yeah. Because he mentions that at the end, the Kata space thing. Yeah, I, uh, I can't remember where where he talked about that, but... Mm -hmm. 